Hi everyone, this is Pablo Rinaldi with HDI Global. Today we're going to be talking about stabilizer bar or like a pretty much is known in the field like a stab bar. Okay, stab bar for me is uh, one of the components of the helicopter that in my case I can see an era start with stab bar. Matter of fact, as uh, you can see in a short moment, that uh, before Bell helicopter was called Bell aircraft, matter of fact, the first. Uh, supersonic aircraft was a Bell plane, but uh, thanks to a very smart uh, person, uh, his name is uh, Arthur John. Uh, in my view, he is really why Bells exist. Of course, with the help and the trust of uh, uh, Lawrence Bell, which was the owner and founder of uh, Bell Aircraft, as you can see in a moment, uh, he really. Uh, the Bell aircraft was closed and nowadays into 2020 you can still see in Bell helicopter and I believe everything start thanks to the stabilizer bar <clears throat> here we can see uh, a little bit the little history about Bell aircraft as you can see Bell aircraft was founded on July 10 1935 and it will stop operation in July 5th, 1960. One of, in my belief, one of the things that caused this to cease is that really Bell focused 100% on helicopter. And uh, as you can see in a moment, you're gonna see that the involvement of Arthur John, it will really change everything. That's why when you're gonna see the video, I say very clear that in my view, uh, Arthur John was the founder founder of a Bell Helicopter. Uh, Arthur John, uh, this is a, a very good video. You can search it yourself. I, I found the link here and I'm trying to put it on the video so you can click directly to YouTube. It was called Birth of Bell Helicopter. In that particular video, you're gonna see uh, a very interesting video about how everything started with Arthur John. Uh, so when I start talking about the stop bar, Arthur John, and the, he, from my view, he's the really founder of Bell Helicopter, because in my view, it's not only the money, it's the idea behind the money, which in my case, I think it is Arthur John. The stop bar is a combination of different section of the stop bar, like uh, I'm going to talk right now. We're going to have the two frames, these two frames are made of uh, aluminum. We're going to have the tube assemblies, these are made of steel. These uh, uh, tube assemblies are really two pieces bolt, uh, welded together right here. So this section here is welded to the tube. And in order to make sure by for safety it don't break and fly away, we're going to have inside of it a cable. Then we're going to have some weights. The reason for this weight is uh, when this turning, we're going to have uh, uh, create some inertia and then also uh, some kind of a gyrocopy effect that is going to be used for the stabilizing of the uh, main rudder. One thing that uh, is not uh, emphasized very clear in any classes is the support. Support is very interesting what it does on the stop bar, which we're going to be talking later. But I would like to emphasize that the, the support are bolted on to the trunnion. And the trunnion is going to be a uh, slide into some splines on the mast. Okay. And that's very important part. Now, what really the most intricate part or my view is that uh, one of the things that for Arthur John to find the way this work is very impressive, which is called the mixing levers. The mixing levers, as we can see later, uh, we're going to have different uh, flight control getting into it. But uh, the mixing lever, when it's called mixing, is because all the input given by to to the start, to the mixing lever by the pilot, uh, that input from the pilot it will not give to the end, which is in this case changing the pitch of the blade 100%. So it's very important when we call mixing lever, what is mixing here? And I hope that by the end of the video, you will understand how the mixing is working properly. So I hope you're gonna enjoy the video and 
we're going to continue discussing more part of the stop bar. Another thing of the stop bar, let me erase this, it is the whole assembly is going to be pivoting right here. So uh, if you're going to see later where this part go up, there is this part going down or vice versa. So really the whole assembly is going to be pivoting in these two points where at the same time are bolted into the uh, support. Okay. This support are made of aluminum. Okay. Now a little bit of assembly here, just I can start discussing a little bit more. Uh, one of the references, uh, the the frames in a way, if you make a center line in right here, is symmetric. Matter of fact, you can install it backwards, but if you install it backwards, one thing is going to happen and it's going to be pretty bad and you're going to find it too late. And it is this bushing here. This bushing always going to be down. Uh, we're going to talk about later uh, where that bushing is going to be connecting a uh, linkages to go from here to the dampers. So that's the only reference that you have what is up and what is down. So again, this bushing you got here on the frames are going to be facing down. Same thing going to be for the opposite side. So the first thing uh, on the on the, on the stop bar is the pivot point where it's going to be compressed of two bearings. We're going to have some uh, a retainer plate. We're going to have some screws to attach it to the frame and then installation of the support into the frame. And of course, the bolt go through it, creating the pivot point. And I was telling you earlier, uh, this is a location where uh, the whole bar is going to be tilting this way or that way. So this is where the location for the pivoting of the uh, stop bar. Another part they're going to be attaching to the, um, the stop bar will be the assembly tubes. And these assembly tubes are going to be bolted into place by four bolts. After we have the stop bar and we have the already talked about the support and the, the tube assemblies, we're going to have the mixing lever. The mixing lever, depending what helicopter we're talking about, remember the stop bar is installed in pretty much all the bell medium group. You go from the 204, go to the military Huey, and then go all the way to the 212. And those mixing levers, depending on the helicopter we're talking about, have different part number, of course, and different bearing, different bolts, and you have to check it out the uh, the manual in order to assemble it, uh, the correct one. But in this case, uh, this video is like uh, we put it on on a 212. Okay, where we're going to have a thrust washer, we're going to have shims. Those shims, we explain it clearly how to shim the mixing lever when we go to the full uh, Bell 212 class or 205, which both classes are offered through HDI Global. When we start the mixing levers, the mixing lever, the attaching location on the frame is a very critical because in here, let me just finish install it, right here is where the whole mixing lever is going to be pivoting or we can say that here's are the hinges for the mixing lever. Another thing that uh, is kind of hard to see this, but uh, the hinges location, if you make a straight line here, okay, every time the, the frame of the stop bar move up, this also move up. Because if remember, this is the pivot point. So uh, I have a better picture that I'm gonna explain better what's going on here. And that's part of what we call the mixing of the lever. That's what mixing lever is very important to understand the concept. I'm gonna try to get a better picture and better functionality of the stop bar. So hopefully at the end, you will understand how the stop bar works. Here's the whole stop bar ready assembly. Uh, assemble. Uh, we're going to have again two mixing levers, the two frame we talked about. We're going to have two tube assembly. We already talked about the way you can see here the cable and of course we're going to have the two uh, support. This support again they're going to be bolted on the trunnion. So anything that happened on the trunnion 
uh, it's going to happen to the support. But at the same token, because the trunion is stalled on the mass, if the mass tilt, the trunion tilts, then this to support also is going to be a tilting. Same angle, same time, everything. So this, in a way, are going to be moving the support. I'm talking about support. Are going to be tilting and moving anywhere the mass move. And that's very critical to understand how the stop bar works. Now, in order to understand how the stop bar works, we need to start for someplace else. And that is the main rotor mast. The main rotor mast, um, remember this section here is gonna be driving at 324. And on the upper splines, we're gonna have uh, one of the component part of the main rotor hop is called the trunion. This part here, the one in red, it's called trunion and the splines you're going to match the one on the main rotor where it means uh, whatever the mass move or tilt that trunion also or as well is going to tilt and that's very critical to understand what's going on now what will cause this mass to tilt is going to be uh, when the pilot move the cyclic uh, I remember I told you a little bit about the mixing lever. So every time the pilot moves the cycle in any direction, uh, the certain amount of that movement is going to go to the main rudder and thus is going to move to whatever the pilot wants to do. When he does that, the first thing is going to start moving is going to be the main rudder and then the mass follow. But again, it's very important for you to know that the mass will tilt, so whatever direction the pilot wants to go with that in mind if we move the cycle to the right this is what really is going to happen it's very important for you to uh, vision that the trunion and the mass they're going to move together same location and what is that very important because I already told you that the support of the the, the start bar are bolted into the trunion and this is very important for you to remember that anywhere the mass move or tilt the trunion tilt and the support as well tilt okay look at this example and i'm trying to make it as more clear as possible so following this we're going to have the mass 324 you go hover and the pilot is going to move the cycle going to the right i already told you that the front of the helicopter is behind me i'm just facing the tail rudder so on this moment if a pilot want to move this the helicopter to the right right the main rudder turn this way what we're going to happen is we want to increase the pitch going this way and the blade going to the right we're going to decrease the pitch that way, what happens is the whole assembly is going to be tilting to the right, pushing air to the left, and moving the helicopter to the right. But because you want to, the, the, the design of the stop bar is to make the helicopter very stable. As you can see now, let me see if I can move this a little by little. Look at the mixing lever being moved by the pilot. This is going to be moving by the pilot. You see how much movement? So anytime the pilot moves the cyclic, whatever moving it is, that we say is 100%. When you're moving this, it's kind of hard to see it, but you're going to see this one moving too because it's connected to the mixing lever. If you can see this part, Look at this section. Let me erase this one. Look at here and compare it to here. I'm going to make it a few times so you can see whatever is happening here, opposite happening on the other side. If you see one goes up, one goes down. Because in this moment, we are moving the cyclic left to right okay now i'm holding the stop bar to show you what's going on on 
a helicopter when you hover. I mean, I cannot be right there with it is when the helicopter is hover. Everything is turning. So for one second, imagine that the stop bar is kept in this position because of centrifugal forces and the gyro, uh, gyroscopic effect. Okay. So every time the pilot moves the cyclic, okay, I will start again. When the pilot moves the cyclic, I want to go to the right. When he does this, this input, put it on the blade, you're going to pull the blade up, increasing the angle, the blade coming this way. When this happens, the whole desk is going to tilt to the right. The next thing is going to happen, if you look at it here, the mass move. When the mass and the trunnion move, what happened to the support? This support also is going to be tilting. When that support tilt, remember when you're doing gyro effect, they tend to be in the center line, 90 degree. But because we already moved the cyclic and the mass already tilt, and I already told you because the support is bolted into the trunnion, right? This support also tilt. Now, because tilt, what happened? Because the gyro effect, that gyro is looking for the 90 degrees. So now, because this is not 90 degree, what happened is, because of the way we have embossed and, and the RPM, centrifugal force and everything, it's gonna make this tube go up, the opposite one goes down, until the stop bar find the 90 degree. Okay? But the time it takes the stop bar from go from this position to whatever on the mat like this needs to be controlled by engineering when they design this head. And it does, it's done by the dampers. I think I showed you right the dampers and the dampers are the one that's gonna give you a control time for this uh, stop bar to uh, go back to uh, the, the the 90 degree uh, point. So when let me see, imagine we're hovering, the mass moving, everything. After all the input, look what happened with the stop bar. The stop bar, because right there we moving the helicopter, the mass is tilting and everything. Guess what? What happened after that? The stop bar also is gonna follow and trying to get the 90 degree that I was explaining to you. When that happened, I want you to put an eye on this. Look at this uh, hinge point of the mixing lever. You see that mixing lever is moving up and down? When that happened, guess what? I told you this is 100% movement. Where it goes here, it's gonna be affecting the piece of link. It's not 100%. Let's make an example. It's gonna be 60%. When the stop bar get the 90 degree, this bar mixing with the other thing, you get the other 40% getting 100% of the input from the pilot. So the stop bar is responsible to finish it up or to complete the 100% input of the pilot. And it's done because the stop bar, when it moves, finding or chasing all the time the 90 degree of the support, he increasing or adding that part that was left over. When the pilot, the 100%, he's not putting the 100% on the blade, he's putting a little bit, is controlling and making the helicopter very stable. And again, the stability at the end come from this linkage that come from the dampers, making this top bar by design to react between four to six seconds. And this make the helicopter very stable. And it's done by damper, which have internally hydraulic, okay? And that's why uh, the 212, 412, uh, 212, 205, uh, Huey, 
They don't need any autopilot. If you can compare this system to the 412, the 412 doesn't have this and it makes the helicopter very squarely. That's why the 412, every single 412 comes with autopilot. You need a, a SAS system, you need a way to help the pilot fly the helicopter, making it very unstable. The 212, 205, Huey, 204 are very stable helicopter and you don't need any uh, device to make the helicopter flyable, stable. It's just a stop bar. And uh, again, we're going to have the MAF-324, we got the Trunium, we already mentioned that the stop bar is bolted onto the Trunium. So again, anytime the anytime the mast and the trunion tilt why i need to make so many lines every time the mass and trunion tilt the first thing is going to be a tilt and follow the mass is going to be the support after that after that happened now we're going to have certain angle that uh they wouldn't want to make sure that uh the stop bar due to the a gyroscopic effect they want to keep that 90 degree and that 90 degree because already tilted it takes some time for the stop bar to follow okay and uh, that caused uh, a delay on the the leftover input needed on the blade remember we say already here by the pilot 100 percent this go to the blade maybe we say 60 percent and with the stop bar move due to the movement of this cost the other 40 percent now uh the mixer layer right here will be correcting or adding the the other part having a full amount of movement of the flight controls okay and that's why we call it mixing lever mixing lever you mix in the input in the blade to two different from two different locations one is pilot and the other one is stop bar those two will affect how much pitch going to the blade. Now, because uh, the stop bar, uh, by design, they need to control how long it takes to the stop bar to move, whatever direction it needs to follow the tilting of the mass, the helicopter designed these dampers. These dampers are designed to create some resti restriction on the movement of the bar by delaying it. So uh, there is a pin that uh, we, we go to the training that we offer to HDI Global. Uh, we talk about a pin you need to check it out. And that pin, when it's loaded to be unloaded, it takes four to six seconds. And that's what we're looking. This is how much delay is supposed to have the stop bar going into adding that 40% of the 100% uh, flight control input from the pilot, okay? Uh, due to this, uh, we have different troubleshooting. Uh, if you have the, the, the dampers too uh, slow, like only two seconds, or if it's over six seconds, this will cause uh, issues that we troubleshoot it. We talk about this in the classroom when we go to the training. But in the books, in the, in the Bell Helicopter Maintenance Manual, there is a troubleshooting for this issue about the dampers. As you can see, here's the stop bar. The stop bar uh, is going to be found in pretty much all the medium groups on the Bell line, uh, from the 204 all the way to the 212. Uh, ironically, the stop bar is really how Bell helicopter start, thanks to a mathematician called Arthur John. He was really the founder of Bell helicopter. He invented the stop bar many uh, years in the early 1900s. Uh, one of the issues on the helicopter were stability. The stop bar gave that stability on the helicopter, and uh, really. When you start seeing the function of the stop bar, the stop bar, bar is connected into the flight controls uh, system in a way that the inertia 
and the gyroscopic action of the bar provide a measure stability in all flight conditions. What I'm seeing right now is one side of the stop bar. We're going to have the two frames and we're going to have the tube and the weight. Okay. Inside the tube there is a wire that is only for safety. Then we're going to have the mixing levers. We're going to have for one side and we have the other side. And we're going to have the support. These two supports, this one is right behind here, is this one bolted into the trunnion. And this is going to be a key uh, element of how the bar works. So when we get into the situation that the bar is flying, it's turning because the helicopter is going to take off, I want to explain how important is the support in the whole process. Now, besides this component I just mentioned to you, we're going to have the push-pull tubes come from the scissor on the swash plate. This is the scissor that comes from the swash plate. So every time the pilot moves the cycling in any direction, this is going to move, the, depending where it's moving the controls, it's going to make this push-pull to push up or pull down. When he do that, this mixing lever is going to move up and down. If you look at it, right in between here, we're going to have the universal union, where we're going to have the PC link connected to the pitch horn, where it's going to go to the grip and then to the blade. So in a way, every time the pilot push, pull uh, this tube by flight controls, what he's doing really, he's uh, pulling or pushing, so he changed the pitch of the blade. But he's not doing 100%. If you look at it, here's the action he's doing, and this is, and we have something very interesting. Right back here, we're going to have the pivot point. And the pivot point of the mixing lever is right here. So if you look at from the top, let me see if I can see that. Right here is where pilot uh, uh, push-pull tube goes. Here is the universal union where it's going to be attached to the pitch horn of the blade. And here is the, uh, the you can say the hinges or the, uh, the place where the whole mixing lever uh, moves. This short video, we're going to be explaining how everything is combined. Cyclic, moving done by the pilot going to the swash blade, from the swash blade going to the drive link, to the scissors, and through the push-pull tube going to the mixing lever. And everything after that point, any movement is going to be only about a certain amount of percentage of the input from the pilot. The rest will be done after the attitudes of the helicopter change and the bar follow it, okay? So what we're trying to do now, if you look at this video, this helicopter, in a way, if you look at it, it got an angle, it's like a going to the right, okay? So one thing is gonna happen, the pilot have to move the cyclic to the left in order to level the helicopter. And this happened through this video. If you look at it, the helicopter right there is level now. For that to happen, he needs to move the cyclic to the left. When he does that, the servos that are located on the front of the uh, swash plate, he's going to push this one down and that's one up. And when that happens, you are tilting the swash plate, which we can see it uh, a few seconds before. I'm going to show you that in a moment. That's the first thing that's going to happen. Right here, you can see that the pilot already is moving the cycle. If you look at here, the mast. And here is the swash plate, so it's tilting. So he making the left side of the helicopter is going to be tilting down and this up. With this happen, just score we are decreasing the pitch of the angle on the blade going to the left 
and the blade going to the right is going to be increasing. And what happened? This uh, is going to make uh, as effect. You're going to have the disc of the middle rudder blowing air to the right, moving the mass to the left onto center. So this is pretty much generic what's going to happen. So if you look at it right now, if we keep going forward after the pilot do this, you know, there's a lot of things going to happen. Not only because you see the pilot just put it on it, any movement he's doing in here, okay, is going to go through the source plate, going to go to the mixing lever, to the scissor, and then to the push-pull tubes. These push-pull tubes are connected into the mixing lever. During the uh, training I was giving to you earlier, I mentioned to you that we're going to have one connection. We're going to have universal union and a PC link that's connected to the pitch horn to that specific blade. We got two, one on each side. We got the, bli the, white, the white and the red blade. Now, all this movement is happening because the pilot moved the cyclic. We can say the full movement is 100%, but because it's going through the mix and lever, that 100% is going to be lost certain amount, which is going to be, we said about 60% only, is going to be put on the blade. So that 60% is only what's going into the blade. Yes, that 60% will make this move, not full what the pilot wants, blowing air to the right and making the mass go to the left. When that happened, we continue the video. When that happened, You can start seeing as a good reference the helicopter straight now, and you're gonna see that the swast plate is more straight. Uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but the helicopter is more straight. Now the swast plate is more perpendicular to the mast. We can say now that pretty much both. Uh, uh, push pull tube are equal, but because it just re got to the point where the pilot moved the cycle, like uh, that the, the mast when it moving here, if you look at the stop bar, it haven't yet get the, per the 90 degrees. So, what happened is if the pilot continue keeping the flight control, the cycle in this position, the stop bar by the gyroscopic. It will take some time to find his 90 degree. That means this side is going to push down by itself and it's up like this. When this continues to happen, remember, we already talked about that this movement of the stop bar is controlled by the dampers, which between four to six seconds, that bar is lagging the moving of the mast, and that's how much time it takes to the stop bar to get the 90 degree. Now, the time the stop bar takes from this angle to find this, which is four to six seconds, uh, means that, as I explained to you before, if you look at it, this is the hinges of the pivot point of the mixing lever. So the mixing lever already put 60% on the flight control, but the time this stop bar keep moving down and up in between four or six seconds, and the bar like this, guess what? Because the hinges of the mixing lever, if you can see here, this like this, this is going to move up on the whole stop bar mixing lever is going to move even this one, increasing further the pitch of the blade. So if we have before 60%, when the stop bar get it exactly 90 degree, we add in the other 40% of the full 100% moving by the pilot. And because from this point to that one, it takes about four to six seconds, it's what makes the helicopter very stable. This helicopter is not squirrely. It's very easy to maneuver, very slow to react to any input by the pilot. And that's why I like to show you this video, how the system works. So what I'm gonna be doing now, I'm gonna go back and forth so you can see uh, this explanation clear. Here we go again. Here the pilot is 
bank it to the right. So he moved it slightly to the left to level the helicopter. So any movement he's doing in here through the swatch plate, whatever movement he's getting, only 60% go to the blade. When the blade got that angle, he gonna try to uh, change the whole disc. As soon as he change the angle, remember, exactly we move the blade, same amount, same time, opposite direction. So whatever direction you wanna move the helicopter, one blade's gonna go up and one blade's gonna go down. On this particular case, because moving exactly to the left, the whole desk of the main rotor is going to change. And that's why he is moving the whole helicopter. And that's the first part you're going to be tilting the main rotor. After he moved the main rotor, the next one to follow is the mast. And the last one will be the stop bar. Out of all three, the one that a bell on the design is controlling the time is the stop bar by the dampers. And that's why the helicopter is very stable. So uh, I hope with this video, you guys have a better understanding how the stop bar works. And if you have any question, please uh, reach out to me and I'm more than happy to explain this in uh, more clear if you have a one specific point that uh, it'll make any sense for you guys. Uh, it's not complicated. Uh, we explain this in more details when you come through our courses uh, to 12 field maintenance, or even in the 212 overhaul, I explain um, in detail how the whole stop bar works. And I hope you enjoyed this full video. It's a little longer, but I hope it give you a good perspective and functionality of the stop bar. Thank you very much.